kind of cliche thing to say is everything in your body's connected, right? Right. You have all your muscles, you have all your bones, and all of that can play into one to affect one area. All right, guys, welcome back to Be Frank Podcast. Today's episode, we're going to focus on, you know, like sometimes people get hurt, right? And then sometimes get injured and then fitness and all kinds of stuff. And then, you know, maybe you guys might think about, should I go to chiropractor? Should I go to physical therapist? Should I go to doctor? Or maybe time just heals. Or like those kind of questions, if you ever had one, maybe this podcast is for you. So today, we have a special guest, physical therapist, but... What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me on the podcast, and I'm excited to be here. Can't wait to dive into some topics. Yeah, thanks for coming. And then, like, I ask every guest that, you know, if you're making a new website today, what your bio would say? Yeah, so if I was throwing out a bio on my website, I would say I'm a physical therapist, born and raised in Norman, Oklahoma, did my school at OUHSC just down the road from here. And now I am a sports and performance physical therapist that wants to get people back to doing what they love. That's awesome. Like sports performance therapist, right? Absolutely. Because I remember like whenever I hurt my shoulder and then like if you guys haven't checked the video, uh, I'll throw it out there. There's a, um, I did a pain sh- shoulder pain workout video with, uh, with you. And then I went to a um, chiropractor for this. Yeah. I went to a physical therapist who I wouldn't like to get into that, but you told me that some physical therapists – through the insurance is like I literally went there for like 15 minutes and then they just like I think they put the needle too on me okay. too but like they just do like show me like some sort of like stretching exercise and then I was in and out and then like it took me like month and month and then like I was going to practice in jiu-jitsu and the Austin Morris told me about you yeah. actually I was having a podcast here and I was like, hey, do you know anybody good? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And he recommended about you and then he sent me that stuff. So I was like, man, I went to your place and that it was very, very different experience. Like, like uh, can you kind of tell me like what is the difference your facility or your work versus typical physical therapist? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm very blessed. I get to have a facility that has a full on weight room. We have weight racks, bumper plates. You could do full Olympic weightlifting or anything like that, which is not typical for your normal PT clinic. Yeah. The other thing we do a little di- differently is I do cash physical therapy versus insurance. So you can get into that a little bit on the side of insurance is usually dictated by what they will reimburse. So we bill insurance X amount insurance sees that sees if they can pay that for us and if they don't we just don't get that money back so on the cash side you come in you pay me a set fee and we can spend an hour of one-on-one time that we get to do kind of whatever we want and whatever's going to help you the best so is that a like a your choice you chose that way because you can tailor to your clients exactly so like we were talking about my facility is a little different with all the weights and everything so you come in for a shoulder, there's usually a typical protocol you treat your shoulder with. Um, insurance likes to see those things and those exercises, and then they'll pay you. Mm. But I like to take a little more in-depth approach of we're going to ask you all kinds of questions. Like when you came in, right, asked what you did, what you do for a living, how you get by through the day-to-day, and then yeah. kind of your stressors, and yeah. then look at left ankle all the way up to your right shoulder. Yeah. And that could always be something that's messing with you, whether it's your right shoulder messing with your left or your left foot messing with your right shoulder. Yeah. Sometimes the area of pain is not always what's really causing the problem. Yeah. It was, I mean, that was true. Like, I love how you say area pain is not, that's not what you're causing. Because you, it was fascinating because my shoulder pain was coming from like, my rats movement yeah. and then you show me how to how I stretch and then how like have to work out like before I do a shoulder workout I have to do that different kind of stuff with rats and then like right. man I never would have thought of like I just like putting Theragun like on my shoulder <laughs> yeah. all the time I was like this hurts <laughs> I'm gonna treat this <laughs> can you kind of explain like how why that how that works yeah so you, the kind of cliche thing to say is everything in your body's connected right and yeah. it's true whether that's 
you have all your muscles, you have all your bones, there's tendon, ligaments, and there's even this stuff on top of a muscle called fascia. Like if you're eating a steak and you peel that weird skin stuff off, that's on our muscles too. And all of that can play into one to affect one area. So like with you, your lat starts here, runs up into the middle of your shoulder. If that's tight and I come up over my head, something's going to pull and pinch, right? Yeah. So we stretched your lat. We got way up higher, and yeah. then now you're able to do pull-ups or kicks or punches or whatever you're trying to get back to. I think bench pressing. Yeah. I think you got your two plates. Saw it on your video. Congrats. That's huge. Thanks, thanks man. Thanks. And it's just like, I mean, like, honestly, like, is that kind of things that insurance therapists won't look at? Like, they say, hey, uh, I hurt my shoulder. So they're like, okay, insurance will cover just shoulder, and then they just treat your shoulder, and then, like, they actually know that's not true? Well, I wouldn't say that. I would say sometimes insurance like gives you a set amount of visits, right? So you have maybe your insurance allows you 10 physical therapy visits. And once after that, it's either on your own or you have to pay a premium price. So put in that situation, they're trying to fix that problem like as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And so am I. But I have the freedom and kind of movement to do that whenever and however I want. Mm. So it doesn't exactly limit them to just looking at that one spot. Like there's good and bad everything, right? Yeah. There's good and bad PTs. There's good and bad Kairos. There's good and bad podcasters. Yeah. Luckily, we're on a good one, right? <laughs> but <Hope so. laughs> if you go through that and you have a little more pressure of, oh, I only have this amount of visits and then he can't come see me anymore. Yeah. That just gives you a little bit of a different pressure and kind of maybe a perspective change. How can I tell, like, okay, this is a good physical therapist? Because, like, I mean, like, if you get better, I guess, yeah. or, like, but sometimes, like, whenever, you know, like, my wrist got hurt. Sure. And then, like, I went to a physical therapist. I went to, what's that called, orthopedist? Okay. Uh, chiropractor, everything, you yeah. know, like, chiropractor was just popped me. Right. And they also, like, they put the cream and then, like, some like laser stuff, and I'm like, that's not gonna heal. Yeah. But also like, uh, orthopedist put me an injection, right. put me in the wrist uh, wrap for like six weeks, to, like a month, yeah, like three months, and then like, it's just how how it has to be. And right. then like, I went to a physical therapist after that, and then they actually show me the exercise to get it stronger. Right. And then. It took months too. <laughs> and yeah, like, it's it just like, took a okay, long time. Finally, okay, like I'm like back to normal a little bit, like not normal. But like how can – because sometimes time is essential, right, right, to heal your body. For sure. So like how can you tell like this is good physical therapy? So how can you tell like, okay, I need to be patient or it's just like, oh, this I need something else? Right. So like you said, you brought up a great point. Like time is crucial for healing. There's different type of tissues. There's different types of healing times for those tissues. So th sometimes that's just a component. Like I have to wait and let this heal. But I would say if you're looking for a good physical therapist or you're trying to like decipher that out, um, just like a good friend, if they're taking interest in you and trying to get you back to what you want to do or just trying to figure out like what makes you tick, like a big thing we talked about, we went into depth about what you like to do, whether that's jujitsu or weightlifting or taking care of a girlfriend, like them really genuinely caring about your interest and trying to cater that treatment to that interest. I would say that is what makes the best um, practitioner in anything, whether that's doctor, chiro, orthopedist, physical therapist, if they're taking interest in you and trying to get you back exactly to what you want to do and kind of listening to how you want to do it, but then giving their opinion and their expertise Mm. I would say that's kind of what you're looking for. Damn, I can't go to any doctor. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, right? It's hard. Yeah. I mean, like, I go to any doctors, like, uh, like, nurse come in, ask you questions, right? And then, like, you just, like, inject. All right, see you in six months. Right. I'm like, dude. <laughs> and that gets frustrating, right? That's kind of, like, the way of our world today is yeah. everything so instant gratification. Like, okay, I go to you. I pay you this money. I need to feel how I'm supposed to feel because I paid you this money. Right. And then that goes into the point of, okay, what makes you tick? How are we going to figure out how to make you rest? That body part. It doesn't need to be whole body. Like, a lot of times people think rest is, okay, I, doctor said rest or physical therapist said rest. I got to go home for six weeks and do nothing. Maybe I can walk my dog or maybe this, but, yeah. um, my point of view on that is, okay, we got something going on with your shoulder or with your elbow. Okay. 
I have a whole nother arm, right? And this arm's super healthy. Mm-hmm. I can do whatever I want with it. Right. Let's do whatever we can in my area of interest yeah. and keep going. The healthier our body is in general, and we talked about that previously, talk about food, talk about sleep, water, breathing, really treating the body holistically so we can put a great healing environment for the part that's maybe not feeling as good. So do you believe like, oh, if you have a right shoulder, it's like painful, can't do nothing. Yeah. And then, but if you're working out with the left arm, with the legs and stuff, it will heal faster? It will help promote a better environment for healing. And you can also get some like crossover strength gains from that as well. So there's some research out there, research papers that show it's more in the legs for like ACLs, post-op ACL. So you see all the ACL tears in soccer and football and whatnot. But if you get that surgery and you're down for however long, if you're really training the right leg that's not affected, but the left leg is, um, the nerve component, our brain runs our body, right? So if that area is working out hard or our upper body is working out hard, that leg that's affected and can't do as much is actually going to stay in a little bit better shape. And once it's able to start moving and doing more with it, it's going to be stronger. Huh. Even they're not working out. Even though it's not working out. Huh. That's very interesting. Yeah. Is that like pretty a, crazy? But a lot of people just like, oh, I'm like ACL. Like, it just, like, can't do anything. Right. I'm going to sit on the couch and not do nothing, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, what, what, I mean, they can do something else, I guess. Yeah, so if, like, there's arm bikes that you could get on, there's, right. I mean, you could, probably not in a pool after surgery, you have to let everything heal, but being as active as possible while keeping that limb mm. very safe. And obviously, you need to do that under the uh, supervision of someone that knows what they're talking about. Right. Right. The more active your body can stay and the more engaged your mind can yeah. be, the better your body's going to heal itself. What is, so you see like people every day to yeah. heal and then like people come to you like when they get injured, right? Sometimes. <laughs> oh, That's okay. a big misconception too. <laughs> like everyone thinks they got to go to PT yeah. after they're hurt. Right. But how long is it going to take after you're hurt to get better? Why right. don't you come like... We're deemed movement experts. We're supposed to be able to tell you how to move the best, what muscles are going to work to help you move the best and stay the strongest. Right. So my thought is, okay, maybe I'm like tight and I'm not hurt. Maybe my shoulder feels tight. My back feels tight. Why don't I go to someone and know that they're talk knows what they're talking about and let them tell me what to do to maintain my health yeah. instead of getting hurt yeah. and then be like, dang, I'm hurt. I need to rest because you're probably <laughs> first thoughts not going to be like, I got to go somewhere. You're going to be like, ah, I'm going to rest this for a week. Yeah. There's a wasted week. Yeah. Then you're <laughs> like, oh, this hurts. I'm going to take some Advil for a week. Yeah. There's a wasted week. Yeah. And now we're two weeks in my whole body's week. Yeah. And then I finally go to whoever. Usually it goes doctor, PT. Yeah. Than whoever right. else after that. I mean, that's uh, exactly what right? I did. Like hurt. Oh, I got to see couple of days to heal, yeah. and then, okay, I'm going to quick chiropractor, right? Yep. Yeah. But yeah, like, see if I can get that instant gratification. Yeah. Right? What is, like, a – like a how can people prevent the injury? Like, is that, like, a not, not – is that, like, a just stupid question? No, that's a great question. That's what I think more people should be asking. Like, how can I become – less likely to get hurt. Right. And that's where you get into the topic of staying in shape, fitness, um, doing mobility. I kind of differ mobility and flexibility in the way of flexibility would be if I took my leg and I pulled it back to my chest as far as I could go Mm -hmm. and I get it however far. That's my flexibility. But what if I lay down and I use my muscles to pull my leg and it only goes halfway? It's not half as far, right? Yeah. So if I can control that, and use my muscles and strength to increase my mobility and not just have the flexibility, that's going to help a lot in the injury prevention. And then just strength, having strength and muscles that protect your shoulders, your hips, your back. Um, A lot of people use the word stability all over the place. Like the more stable your back is, the better you'll feel. The more stable my shoulder is, there's small muscles and there's big muscles. So like a lot of people recognize delts, right? Right. Delts a big muscle, side raises, front raises. And then you hear everybody talk about their rotator cuff or the 7,000 other words they call it, like <laughs> rotator cup or rotate, <laughs> rotary cup or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Those small muscles help control that stability. So you got that. 
you're humorous, the ball sits in the socket. Right. Big delt helps it move up and down. Yeah. The smaller muscles help control that ball in the socket. Uh-huh. So help it roll down when I go up so I don't impinge or pinch some structures in my shoulder. Huh. And then all of that small stuff can lead to injury prevention. So if my body's moving better and it's more stable, the less likely I am to get hurt. That or makes feel sense. feel pain. Yeah. Is that a... Because I've been hearing so many things about, like, don't stretch before you work out. And just yeah. do, like, do, like, a roll, like, foam roll. Yeah. And then just get the heart rate up and then work out and then stretch afterwards. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, so there's a lot of different thoughts on that. The reason people say don't stretch before is, say, you got a rubber band, right, and you hold that rubber band out for a minute. Maybe that rubber band doesn't snap back like it did before. So that's like our muscles. Yeah. If you hold it for a long time, it's not going to have that elastic reflex like it would if you didn't stretch. So yeah. that's why we talk about mobility, like get your heart rate up, go on a walk, take a quick jog, do high knees or something moving like you're going to prepare for. So if you're going to go squat or you're going to go bench press, do exercises that look like that to warm up for it. And then get your stability muscles like your rotator cuff fire. And so when you're bench pressing, that shoulder is going to be stable to push that weight. Huh. But stretching is so not bad. Okay. Like, I know you're going to go down that line. Yeah. So, like you said, stretch after. You just don't want to stretch and then go into, like, an explosive movement or a movement where you're going to really use power to move weight or whatever else. So, if you get heart rate up, yep. then stretch deeply and then work out, it's going to be bad? It's just going to produce less, like, force or performance. You're not going to be able to perform as great. And that first few Oh, because reps. you stretch. Because you kind of stretch your muscles out. They're well, not going to have like that power elastic reflex that you're going to have if you do more of a quick movement. Is that overall health as a lifetime looking at it, if you do that every time, like if you stretch every time of your workout, mm-hmm. then is that is that better? Because like if you're saying like a less power, right? Yeah. But if you're like a starting point, yeah, is a less power every time, and then it's probably gonna get more powerful over as time. As you go, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so like if you're looking at a lifetime like that, it's not instant gratification of like, okay, you're not gonna have power if you stretch. Right. But if you stretch, is that more less likely to get hurt? Or like a if you stretch before your workout, it's more likely to get hurt. No, I bet over time, and if you put it like consistently, especially if you're going from nothing to starting to getting into that, you're still going to be able to get, like you said, your gains out of that, and you're going to increase power or strength throughout. Yeah. But if you're talking like a higher level athlete, like someone that's about to go run a sprint, like you talk about Usain Bolt or something like that, yeah. you don't see him sitting there holding his foot for a minute right before he goes and runs a nine, whatever, 100. He's bouncing up and down. He's jumping. He's like doing ankle flips doing some motions that he's about to perform in that sprint. Yeah. So just being a little more specific with that. And then um, the heart rate, like you're talking about, that's just going to get your muscles warm, more blood flowing. And then that decreases likeliness of pulling something or tearing something before you go do it. Okay. But a stretch afterwards, like any type of movement is better than none, right? Gotcha. Especially in the world we live in today. Yeah. Especially Oklahoma. Like we're one of the – least fit states in the country (laughs) yeah um i would always say more movement the better yeah so stretch after not before yes okay long hold stretches you can move you can get your body heart rate up before and then stretch after that makes sense kind of like a cool down right yeah yeah, what what is, what do you see the most of like people get hurt like knees, shoulders, or so my f- facility is a little biased towards baseball players, so I treat a ton of shoulders and oh, elbows. Got you. Um, but I'd say like in the general community, a lot of low backs, a lot of hips, and then knees. Why? So do you think those are injury? I know like it depends on people, right? Yeah. But like you see everybody like on average. Do you think? They're just lifting too heavy, like it's do squat, deadlift, I mean, or like something like that, or like they just go too quickly. Like, what do you see? Why do you think, like, you you know, right? Oh, yeah. there's, oh, they did this. Oh, right. of course, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, what is that? I would say most of it's form, maybe not lifting too heavy or even too much. 
but just knowing how to do it properly Mm -hmm. or not having the mobility to get into those positions and then just something tweaks, right? Mm. Like a squat. Everyone demonizes squat because you put a bunch of weight on your back and people think everyone hurts their back just from squat. Um, Usually it's a kind of cascading effect of I didn't sleep that night. I didn't eat all that good. Um, And then you go do something and it's just like the last straw. Mm. So most injuries aren't just like one thing happened and that's what hurt myself. It was a maybe years of neglect of one specific area, and then that one thing just kind of clicked it. Gotcha. Like, I bent down to pick up my dog, and my back hurts. Yeah. That's probably not the reason your back hurts. You probably had, like, five to ten other things that have happened previously to line up to that. Yeah. That that totally makes sense. I mean, like, do you recommend – so, like, you're talking about, uh, you know, you were were talking about, like, uh, bigger muscles – and then, like, uh, also, like, uh, tissues and yeah. small. I mean, like, if you just do the weightlifting, right, like, it's just, like, maybe seven exercises in one day, yeah. right? Like, work out five uh, five days a week or whatever. Uh, that's probably not going to cover it, right? Like, is that covers it? It's better than nothing. Right. But if you go, I mean, the government has its own guidelines, yeah. 150 minutes of exercise a week. So that's what, 30 minutes, five times a day. Um, and then they recommend at least two days of resistance training. But that's yeah. like bare minimum. Right. But you look at some of the reports and it's like, I'm probably overshooting. And I think it's like 45% of the United States hits those bare minimum exercise requirements a day, mm. which is crazy, right? Yeah. And we talk about all this wild stuff with health like everyone has heart disease or adhd or anything like that and there's ways to prevent that and some of it's genetics like you're born with it right maybe your parents had it maybe this and that yeah. and you're not going to change that but exercise has such amazing health benefits and that's just you could go on a walk and that doesn't matter if it's on a treadmill outside find a mall i know it's 110 degrees in oklahoma right now but there's always <laughs> somewhere you can go yeah. to get your exercise in just to get your blood flow, and that can help decrease blood pressure. Um, it helps promote a better ha- uh, diet. Yeah. Like you just sit around and do nothing. You're not going to be too hungry, and maybe you make bad food choices. But yeah. if you're exercising more, and if you talk to anybody that knows what they're talking about and you need specific nutrition, you're going to want to eat better food to be able to feel better while you're working out. So, like, uh, have you seen the documentary called Game Changer? Is that the uh, plant-based? Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, what, do you, what do you think about, like, the good nutrition, good food? Like, how do you, how do you explain that? Because, like, I was, like, watching that documentary. I'm like, man, like, it's a lot of plant-based protein. It's hard, right? And, yeah, but also, like, a protein doesn't like I, I guess like it cleans out the blood and then like uh it's just performance based so like I was uh, you're like, talking about like the blood test when one ate chicken and one ate beans or yeah something yeah like yeah that. It was, that was so, crazy to yeah, see yeah so much cleaner I'm like man what am I putting in my body every single day and then probably putting meat every single day is probably not good for me or whatever you know like right. I mean Arnold Schwarzenegger changed his diet <laughs> and then like, you know, a whole bunch of like a world's strongest man is like plant based. And then like, yeah, just, uh, yeah, a lot of like, uh, you know, I guess marketing, right? Like a marketing puts like people say, hey, eat bur- bacon cheeseburger. Right. Eat like a man. Right. If you eat the plant based <laughs> Uh, veggie and like you look like um, you know eating my food's food or whatever people right. make fun of you or whatever yeah. but I think the science is coming out and out and they also like I guess meat community and all that kind of stuff is pushing those kind of stuff and then I understand that as well but like uh, I don't know what's your take on what's a healthy diet right so like it's tough like I usually just go into the basket of what can you afford and what do you have access to? And then how can you eat the healthiest for you? Like right. Me growing up in Oklahoma, I'm probably not going to switch from eating meat all of my life to eating all plants overnight. Right. But maybe you could make that like a once a week kind of deal right? or a twice a week kind of deal or making sure you're eating the right protein um, and cooking it the right way. Mm. Right. We're kind of like 
halfway in the south down here, so a lot of things are fried. Right. And chicken by itself is pretty good for you, but you put breading on it and put it in peanut oil or whatever oil you want to fry it in, that makes it a lot worse. Yeah. Um, and then we just, I think a lot of people neglect like greens and veggies and back to the instant gratification thing. Everyone has a supplement now, right? Yeah. You got a green drink, shake it up, <laughs> drink it. I don't need veggies. I got all my greens or like a fruit drink, shake yeah. it up, drink yeah, it. I don't need I fruit, right? <laughs> yeah. It's easy. Like, ah, oh, I got my vegetables in today. I'm good. Yeah. But then you're missing a lot of stuff from that. Like the reason people want you to eat veggies, there's a lot of fiber. There's a lot of different health benefits of just having that raw vegetable being put into your body, whether that's for digestion or yeah. anything of that sort. Um, Is that any... gets way into the line of like dietitians and nutritionists yeah. that I'm not going to go completely speak on because that's yeah. not what I am. Yeah. But there's a lot of good people out there that could guide you to that. So do you think the people should go seek a help with those people? Or like, do you know, is any like a book or website people can go to and say, hey, this is a good nutrition? Yeah, I think with anything, like there's experts out in the world for almost everything, right? Yeah. Whether that's marketing, whether that's physical therapy, whether that's dietitian, I would mm -hmm. say reach out to somebody locally and just pick their brain. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a friend that went to school for something or mm -hmm. someone looks a certain way that you want to look like, yeah. ask them what they're doing. It's not going to hurt. Um They can only share their information, and if you want to take it and run with it, great. If you want to kind of ignore it and go a different route or find something that works better for you, yeah, awesome. But you can do all these different diets like keto or Atkins or whatever else. Yeah. But if you only do it for two weeks, yeah. that's not going to help. Yeah. Like consistency, whether that's working out, whether that's building a business, whether that's diet, it's all consistency. Yeah, I mean, I mean I taking stuff out of your diet, like – Soda is a big thing, right? Yeah. People drink eight, nine sodas a day, yeah. and they try to cut that out completely cold turkey. Like People get addicted to sugar, whether we want to think it or not. Like Cookies are my downfall. <laughs> There's a bag of cookies. I'm eating all of them, not just one. <laughs> um, so just trying to take some of that out in little bits and pieces is going to help you slowly back off of that instead of just taking it all out. Yeah. Like going from eating bad yeah. to trying to eat like the people on Game Changer, yeah. how hard is that? I think it's super hard. Super hard. Yeah. But I what I noticed and then I've been like kind of slowly changing it to not eating as much as meat. And yeah. then uh what I noticed is I thought I have to eat salad the whole time. Right. <laughs> you know? I was like <laughs> salad bags and bees, and bags. You know? I'm like, ah, I just can't do that, you know? And then like, but there is, you know, bunch of restaurant who offers vegan food for sure and it's actually pretty tasty yeah it was funny because whenever i watch um uh, that documentary the next day i was traveling to uh uh some out of state and then i was like at the bar at the airport and then i ordered a burger and i was like yeah and burger and fries you right. know right And then uh, I ordered Beyond Burger. I didn't even know Beyond Burger was like a veggie stuff. Okay. And then like it's not actual meat and I was eating all that stuff. I'm like, this is like tastes good and all that kind of stuff. And then I was talking about like that other person is like uh, talking to and like, oh, that's like uh, I, was I was telling him like, yeah, this is Beyond Burger. It's pretty good. You know, he's like, oh, that's like uh, not meat. Huh? I'm like, oh. I guess. <laughs> you know? So I didn't notice that. And then I loved it, you know? Right. So, like, it's kind of like, it's like people think, like, oh, you have to eat salad for all that kind of stuff. I don't I don't really think so. I think it's a, there is a lot of option to that, you know, like right. modification. And then I think it's fascinating to what you just said about, like, whatever works for you, right? Mm -hmm. And then obviously some people – Even like a veggies and oats and all that kind of stuff. Some people have like a allergy to oats. Right. So even like you talk to expert or whatever, like might not be work for you, you know? Yeah. So I think you try it out, stick to it, and then know that what you can and what you cannot do, what's good for you. But also it's like life is so complicated sometimes. And then like you, maybe you're not allergic to oats right now but you might be in three years right so it's just crazy, crazy it goes crazy. all over yeah. the place and yeah that just goes back to the point of 
do what's best for you right. and what's going to work. Yeah. Like if you try to follow one thing and you hate it, mm. that's not going to work for you. Yeah. But maybe you pick an option that may not be the best research or whatever else, but yeah. you can stick to it for a long time. It's going to work a lot better than doing something for a week and then yeah. quitting. Yeah, that's true. I mean, like, so like, uh, you're saying like there's like expert to everything, right? Yeah. So let's say you, your back get hurt, you, your back is hurt. And then like where people should go. Right. Like there's a chiropractor, there's a orthopedist, yeah. doctor, you, um, I don't know where else they can go. Meditation. I don't know. Right. <laughs> or just not go anywhere. Yeah. Like, what What do you recommend? So I'm going to be biased. I'm a physical therapist. Come see me. Yeah. Your back hurts. Come see me. We'll get you right. Um, but I'd say like, especially in our area of the country is go to someone that's close and that you can trust, whether that's friends that have recommended them or back to the first topic we talked about, interview people like Go to a physical therapist and interview them. Ask them how they're going to treat your back and what they're going to do for you. Or to a chiropractor, are you only going to do one thing and then send me out the door? Or are you going to educate me on diet and right. sleep and um, healthy habits, whether that's breathing? Yeah. Like a lot of times we just get super stressed in our life and that can cause pain if something's hurt or not. Like a lot of people feel pain in their back or their neck or they get headaches when they get really stressed. Um Pain does not always mean something is damaged, Yeah, which is really hard to understand, right? Like, I feel something in my arm. Something's probably, like, damaged. It's not always the case. It could be an accumulation of all kinds of things. Um, like what? Like stress buildup or Do fear of a movement or something happened when you were a little kid and you try that again as you're a little bit older and that hurt back then, mm. but you have that memory of that and it comes back. Um, I love huh. telling the story of a runner. Runner had knee pain one time. They came to see me. We were doing all these tests, all this kind of different stuff, and like we just couldn't figure out exactly what was going on. Nothing was hurting at the time. Because every time you go to a doctor or something, whatever hurts doesn't hurt when you get there, right? You're like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. It hurt five minutes ago. Now I'm in here and I can't get it to act up. Yeah. But we found as we were taking the story, which is a big thing, really getting into their story, what were they doing, what do they do every day, um, we found that every time he or she, I can't remember what it was, passed a tree, her knee started hurting. Mm -hmm. So she like tripped one time, hurt her knee at that tree, and then it healed. But then she had that memory in her mind and that kind of relayed pain to her knee every time she passed that tree. And mm -hmm. so we switched her route and we kind of had her like time, whether it was five minutes into the run or half a mile into the run and didn't pass that one spot, and she always she didn't get that same sensation, which was crazy. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the heck is going on? Well, that shows how powerful your brain is, whether it's conscious and you know you're doing it, or subconscious and you just see it and it kind of relays that response back to your knee as a memory. Wow. Crazy. That is crazy. Super crazy. Is that, uh, I mean, like a lot of people like think about like holistic, like therapy, holistic healing. Yeah. I mean, I like guess sometimes it's controversial to go to, um, you know, chiropractor, right? Sure. I mean, people say all the TikTok, all the sounds is right. fake, <laughs> you know, like there's nothing going on with the chiro chiropractor. Like, it's just, what do you think about that? So I think there's a time and place for everything. I have some chiropractor friends that are amazing, and I think they do great work. Um, I do think some of the adjustments or whatever treatment ways, they don't just pop people, which is a big thing. Everyone's like, oh, I go to the chiropractor, they just pop me and then it's done. They have a lot of different treatments that they use that I'm not going to speak on. I'm not a chiropractor and I don't know exactly how they use or their philosophy behind it. But one thing that I believe you need to do after that is back it up with some type of mobility or strengthening exercise to help promote like longevity of that. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about that with my friends. It's like, hey, I can do this, but I can't always bill for exercise or I don't know exactly what to do because that's not what I went to school for. Can you shoot me some stuff I could give my patients? Perfect. Awesome. Let's get some movement in there and something they can practice at home so they don't just become dependent on you or I. And that's anybody, whether it's chiropractor or physical therapist. My goal is to give you something like I gave you what three or four exercises to do at the gym as a warm up, mm -hmm. and then you could be autonomous 
on your own yeah. to do it. Yeah. And you don't have to come to me every single day, right? Or every two days. Yeah. Like, you go do this, see if it works for you. If it doesn't, let's come back. Let's dive into the next problem or something we can give you at home to really keep you going. Yeah, it totally worked for me. I mean, yeah. like, it was like just a day of when we did it. And then like, yeah, the, but we also did an acupuncture, like a needle, right? Yeah. How, what, I thought you explained to me, but can you explain to me again, like why is that needle is important? Right. So we use acupuncture needles, but as physical therapists and kind of on the Western medicine side, we call it dry needling. So we're not channeling meridians or chi or anything like that. We didn't study that. I don't know all of that mm. kind of research or what they do. Yeah. But on the acupuncture or on the dry needling side, we find a trigger point. So like a poke a spot and it hurts or find an area of tissue that's built up or mad like yours was put those needles in specific locations that we know is not going to puncture anything important. Mm -hmm. And then we actually hook it up to E-STEM, right? We put the little jumper cables on there and make your muscle twitch. And that actually releases endorphins in our brain that are produced kind of the same way as if you were to take a pain pill. Mm -hmm. So pain pills usually release something in our brain that we um, can release on our own, that our brain creates on our own. But we did that with a needle. So it's kind of creating an area of irritation to bring your body's healing responses focused on that area. Mm. So acupuncture is better than Advil? Equal to without some of the side effects. Why are you, why are you saying like that? Because, I mean, in PT and anything medical, <laughs> you have to be like really research-based, right? Like I'm not just going to throw out a bunch of opinions that I think are right. Yeah. I have to have something to back it up. Right. And there is some research out there that dry needling with the E-STEM is equal to taking Advil for, I can't remember if it was three to five days. Yeah. Um, with the same decrease in pain. Yeah. But I would say if you want a better or not, I'm going to go it's better because I'm not putting – a foreign substance into my body. Yeah. Right? Like I'm letting the body release its own painkillers to decrease my pain in that area. Gotcha. Which with any medication, you have side effects, whether that's good or bad. Does um, a dry needle has a side effect? Um, it can have like irritation or skin irritation oh. or soreness. Yeah. But nothing on the side of like hurting my kidneys or anything like that. Gotcha. Like if you don't say, if you take too much Advil and don't eat or drink enough water, you could have some side effects internally. Um, that's a very rare case. Yeah. But that's our first go-to, right? Right. I yeah. played football. Like, <laughs> we took tons of Advil, went and played football and feel yeah. better. Yeah. Or you in jujitsu, like you probably have aches and pains every night after yeah. that or. I don't, I don't take any, I mean, like whenever I have a headache, maybe I'll take like a leave or something, but yeah. like for my, uh, elbow whatever the pain i don't take any leave or i don't know whatever because it just doesn't do anything to me for you yeah so like uh i just don't take it sure but maybe i should um have a disclaimer that we're not medical doctors that's right yeah we're not prescribing anything it's, here, yeah right? we're not prescribing <laughs> we're not saying so you know this is our individual opinion. Yeah. Take it, leave it. This is it works for us, not yeah, work for exactly. us. Yeah, exactly. So it has a disclaimer. But uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, like you're talking about, um, you know, just get like uh, what works for you. But like, uh, what do you do for like, like workout? What do I like to do to work out? Like, yeah, like so I love week. weightlifting, right? Yeah. Like weightlifting is my thing, whether yeah. that's all kinds, whether that's like Olympic lifts, powerlifting, stability work, doing the stuff I program for our baseball guys at our gym. Um, so that's kind of my strength training. Yeah. And then I don't do a ton of cardio right now. I should. <laughs> but in the mornings, me and my wife wake up, take our two dogs on like 15, 20-minute walk, get outside, soak up some sun, and then take them home. And that's kind of mine. Uh, if I had time right now, I'd love to do yoga I think yoga is amazing just for the benefits of learning how to control your breath mm -hmm. while you're moving mm -hmm. is very powerful. And then they also teach a lot about focusing on one thing. So mm -hmm. taking your mind from the thousand different things in our world, right? Whether that's social media, work, money. Um, we're having a baby in October. So like taking our wow. brain away from that and focusing on breath and being in the moment, I think is super powerful. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We're uh, prepping, so yeah. it's crazy. 
Like prepping what like the house, our uh, bodies, yeah. <laughs> complete change of life. Yeah. <laughs> Is that like uh, you guys like try to not sleep longer or something? <laughs> not yet. No, we're soaking up all the sleep we can get. But going back to healthy practices, learn like yeah. making sure we're still cooking super healthy meals, being able to meal prep. Yeah. Meal prep's a big thing. Just being um, uh, ready for the week. Yeah. Like if you have, if you can't eat healthy or you don't have something healthy by your work. Yeah. Cook your meals on Sunday and pack it and put it in a lunch pail like you're in third grade or put it in a yeah. fridge or something like that. I bet as you're a physical therapist and that your wife is pregnant and I bet you do a bunch of research, right? Yeah. Like it, what 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 was this like surprise you like you didn't know after you like going through this and then what did you find on new things about like a woman's like a pregnancy body or like people say like don't eat sushi or whatever. But like right, yeah, you there's find out. there's so many different things that are like not so see like you said sushi or deli meat or anything like that. Um, on the nutrition side, I don't know if I like figured anything out crazy, <laughs> but just being able to the uh, coping mechanisms of like helping her get through hard times or yeah. her not feeling good or yeah. them being super sick or just as you're starting, the baby's starting to grow, feeling pain in different areas. Yeah. Like, learning how to treat that. Like, I'm not a pregnancy physical therapist or yeah. a women's health physical therapist, so that's not something I had done a ton of research on. So starting to dive in some of that and figuring out ways to help her. Like, right off the bat, I was like, you got to do these exercises every day so your back doesn't hurt. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, she's like, gosh dang it. Here we go. Yeah. Is there, is there like a pregnancy, like a back – uh, preventable exercise like stuff? program or something yeah. uh, i'm sure there is something out there somewhere <laughs> but i just gave her the stuff i know that helps like low yeah. back pain is that your first one or? it'll be our first yeah okay yeah that's exciting it's crazy <laughs> crazy i mean someday you know it's gonna come but you're never gonna be ready for it and yeah we're still soaking in the last month or two of just us. It's October, huh? Like, yep. do you have the date or? Like 15th, 18th-ish. Okay. So they give you like a range, right? They're like, nice. the due date is around here. Cool. Like, my birthday is October 21st. Oh, there we go. Yeah. My wife's the 20th. So oh, she's cool. begging that it's not on her birthday because that's her day. Yeah. Yeah, that would be kind of, <laughs> who, who's going to get, you know? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Who gets the cake? Yeah. But uh, I do ask this same question to uh, all the guests, but... Uh, 2018, what were you doing? 2018. Oh, man. It's five what years part? ago. So the first half, so phys physical therapy school is three years. Yeah. So I went to undergrad, graduated 2017, didn't get in. I was crushed. I was like, oh, man, what am I going to do? I ended up coaching high school football mm -hmm. with my old high school football coach and then took a lot of hours of class to get into school. So 2018, the start – I was still coaching football, mm. and then I got into school. I guess in 2018, March. Okay, 2018, August. I guess August of 2018. I had just gotten into physical therapy school, and I was deep into class. Nice. Starting to study. <laughs> what uh, What advice would you give to yourself in the five years ago? Oh man, advice I would give to myself is slow down and enjoy the moment that you're in. Because when you get into PT school, you just been through four years of college. Then I had to take more class to get into PT school. And I was like, man, all I want to do is to get out of PT school to start making money and didn't maybe absorb everything I could have during that time, whether that was the freedom of not having to work X amount of hours a week or being able to study with friends at a coffee shop or go on a vacation if I could. Mm. Um so really enjoy the moment that you're in and realize how much work you did to get there. That is awesome. How do you how do you see yourself in five years? Blowing this physical therapy business up. <laughs> um, really widening our horizons. Right now we're really baseball focused on the skill side, but we're really taking, we have different technology. We have a 3D motion capture system, which is crazy, measures all your joints in real time. And then a, a machine called the Proteus that measures power output and can do different tests for different sports, which really allows me to program very well on the strength and conditioning side. Mm. Um, 
but really broadening that we're trying to get we've done some jujitsu people we've done some crossfit gyms starting to get into some golfers but really just spreading um, the word on the technology plus creating healthy habits and improving kind of community health yeah i mean i like that i love your uh place and the how love what you do because athlete gets pain and then all they want to is get back right and then like you first thing you said to me was like let's get you back as quick as possible that's not some doctor says <laughs> sure <laughs> doctor is like ah you work too working out too hard and you're doing that stuff and then it just kind of irrit- irritates me but like you know like whenever you said that okay this guy is gonna try to help me yeah so i love that about that and then also like you actually it's ironic you took more time to look at me and you took more time to get to know me and then you took more time to actually do stuff and the massage and all that kind of stuff for process and they uh it healed me you know so yeah. i think that's that's why i keep recommending to everybody i know like you know austin buoy i think you yeah absolutely. you know like working with him and all that kind of stuff and then uh yeah i think it's the uh, a lot of people get crushed and they just mental health kind of aspect of it. People can't do what they can and all that kind of stuff. Also like a physical health, but I think people should work on, not should, but I mean, probably should work on the mental health side of things. And then even like, I don't know what you work on with like uh, your baseball players, right? Yeah. Like, cause if you're playing baseball, your identity is like, I'm a baseball player. Right. But realistically, they will not be playing baseball um, their rest of li- their life, right? right? So, like, that point, like, they have to work on the mental health, and then they just neglect that, you know? I don't know. You guys <laughs> yeah, do still kind of stuff. All of it, right? Yeah. Like, all of us find identity in something. Yeah. Um, whether that's your job, whether that's your sport, whether that's something spiritual yeah. or even like people with dogs nowadays. Like, yeah. this is my dog and that's my identity and a dog passes away and it's a lot for people. Yeah. But that can be with anything. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that's a complete bad thing. Yeah. Like that's good that you're passionate about one thing, but maybe finding a few things that you can really like hang your hat on, whether that's creating something like a podcast, like you're yeah. doing, this is awesome. Yeah. Or having multiple um, alleys that you can go down that like, this is what I like to do and this is what I love. Yeah. And you talked about the mental health side. Um, physical therapists, we're not psychologists, but we get a lot of the talking from people because it's kind of a vulnerable state. Yeah. Like, I'm hurt. I want to get back to something and you're the person that's going to spend a lot of time with me and try to get me back to where I want to be. Yeah. And I feel comfortable with that. Yeah. So we do a lot of just kind of listening. I think listening is probably the more important thing than even advice. I love Having that, yeah. someone that you can go to and talk about whatever, and yeah. they're just going to sit there and help you and listen. Yeah. I think that's a big part of the healing process. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whether that's if your shoulders hurt, um, just getting the stuff out of your brain that you've been holding in yeah. and saying, I can't do this because of this, or I can't take care of someone else because of this, yeah. um, really helps clear all that out. Yeah. I mean, I love that because I mean, you were talking to me about that, you know, the runner, if yeah. you didn't listen, that was a whole mental health, right? Absolutely. So, I mean, it's just mental and the physical it's connected. And then like, I think I was listening to different podcasts and it's about like, you know, can you be a just be strong man if you're like scared of yourself? Yeah, you know, if interesting not, question. Yeah, right? it's like if you're not like looking in, if you're working out and the physical, all that kind of stuff. But if you can't look at yourself mentally, ask hard questions to yourself. Are you a really strong guy? You know, right? And then like you know, it's just sometimes I I've, I've been going to therapy and then I've been going to talking to that stuff, doing journal, and then, like, working on myself to get in it internally. I think I think that's something, like, I would like to get it out to the world, too. Like, it just, like, you know, physical health and getting, like, uh, I think that's good, you, you guys going to gym and then getting fit, getting six-pack and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, that's all good, and it got motivation and confidence, and then... I support that and I love that. I love everything that teaches fitness, like a discipline and, 
you know, uh, long-term uh, satisfaction, all that kind of stuff. Right. Gratification. Yeah. But some point, you know, like people get hurt. Sure. People get like uh, some stuff happen in life. And then, so like, don't forget, like, um, don't forget to like enjoy that you can go to gym. Right. And that you can do bench press. Maybe tomorrow you can't. Mm -hmm. But also like, uh, you know, if you can't do that, well, that's okay too, you know? Right. That's the kind of that kind of message I would like to give to give out to people. It's just like, I don't know, it's a lot a lot of happening, a lot going on, and I see a lot of people of like different kind of take on that, but you know, life is up and down. <laughs> it's a roller coaster. Yeah. It's never just straight up. Right? Yeah. But I think that uh, you know, what I appreciate about you is like you know that stuff and the mental and all that kind of stuff and then get people your healer. I think that more people that, you know, get injured or something like that, they go in dark place. I will I, I'm glad you're here and then hopefully a lot of people listen to this and then go to you because you know, I've learned it a hard, hard way and it cost me a lot of money to right. find you. So, yeah. you know, like hopefully people are listening and then, you know, just just try it out to come talk to you. And then like, I think, uh, hope I hope it will help you, you know. But is there anything else that uh, we didn't cover that you wanted to cover? I mean, kind of on the long, the topic of that you just spoke about is I just think take care of yourself. And like you said, don't be scared to talk to people about things that you're feeling. Usually something you're feeling is probably something other people are feeling and that can help you with, whether that's a like licensed professional as a therapist or a psychologist or psyche, uh, psychiatrist, yeah. anything like that. Seek help. Or even if it's a friend, I have like three people on my phone that I know if something's going on with me and I can't figure it out, I'm going to ask them, what the heck do I do? Where do I need to go? And I'm not scared to do that. Yeah. And I think there's a big stigma around that nowadays that you can't talk to people. And I think that needs to kind of be broken and yeah. find somebody, whether yeah. it's a stranger. Like, yeah, that's what I get a lot with the PT is they tell me cr like crazy amounts of stuff. <laughs> and I don't ever ask, like, do you not have anyone at home to talk about this? But they probably don't. Like, yeah. you have a busy job. You got two kids at home. There's no time to sit down and just let stuff out. Yeah. Find somebody that you can do that with, whether that's a friend, whether you pay somebody to do it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah, I love that. I mean, people think therapy is weak things. I mean, still, but it's awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> On your side, what are you doing? What's your health what's your health journey right now? I know you've done the bench press challenge. Yeah. You're doing jujitsu. Yeah. Where are you at? Uh I'm doing meditation challenge. Awesome. I'm doing like a thirty day straight meditating. Uh, also that, uh, I'm dabbling into doing the triathlon. Okay. It's like, I suck at swimming. Like, it's just like a literally, it's just been a different journey for me. But, uh, you know, I, I like running. Uh, right. I used to hate running, but running is kind of fun for me right now a little bit. And then biking, I'm probably not going to practice. Yeah. I think I can do like... Just knock it out? <laughs> probably. Probably <laughs> that's a probably mistake I'm going to make. Right. And then I'm going to talk about it afterwards. But, you know, I think I can just do that. And I've done biking throughout like a Lake Hafner a couple of times and it was no problem. So yeah. I don't see why it would be. Uh, but, you know, swimming, yeah, I've been trying to swim a lot and then meditate and then more so... It's kind of funny, like I think the fitness stuff, like fightings and... Jiu-Jitsu, I'll, uh, jiu I'll get back to it at some point in my life. But right now, my focus is being to be um, be a good person, good yeah. human, uh, good um, to other people, kind to people, and then work on internally rather than externally. Yeah, I did a bench press and all that kind of stuff. Thanks for that. The tip. Yeah. I did exactly what you say, bench eight reps, six reps, and four reps, and four reps, and then, yeah, I got I got it, you know, down. Heck you know? yeah. It's so, awesome. yeah, just, uh, just like uh, what I've been preaching is fitness is important, but also like, uh, yeah, just work on mental health because if you don't have a good mental health, 
you don't work out very hard. <laughs> That's right. right. It's harder, right? Yeah, it's but, like a bridge to yeah, get to that yeah. physical health. You got to have good mental health. Yeah. And some people get, like you were talking about earlier, like, yeah. is fitness becoming too much of a thing? Like, is yeah. it being pushed too hard on people that it's starting to bring people down? Yeah. And that's a tough conversation. Yeah, it's like... And uh, maybe the optics and, like, the vision of people, like you said, having six-pack abs and they're cut up, maybe that's too glorified. Yeah. But fitness is going to look different to everybody and yeah. different on everybody. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, a lot of social media influencer just shows the best version of themselves online, and mm -hmm. then you don't have to be, you right. know? And then I think if they're trying to be better to yourself, that's just the only thing that's important, you know? Right. It's like, I don't know, like fitness, I love fitness. I think everybody should. Yes. But I don't know everybody should. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's a hard question to ask. But I think if they care about it, about health, and then I think human body is meant to be moving. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, just like, if you're sitting, I mean, like, even not even fitness stuff, you know, like to goal is to not get like a six pack or anything like that. But walk around 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you feel better. Absolutely. So I think it's it's not even just to get into the shape. It's just like just do do what makes you happy. And if you're happy, who cares if you have a six pack, you know, if you're healthy, who cares if you have a bench press two plates, you know, but right. sometimes it's important to me, makes me happy, but you know, not for everybody. That's not what I'm trying to preach to from this YouTube. And then I want to have these kind of, I, that's why I love these kind of podcasts, you know, I'm doing certain things, you know, showing people like, yeah, I got abs or whatever. Right. right? And then I'm like choking people out or whatever. Like, but like, that's not, uh, that's not the goal in life. The goal in life is to be happy and enjoy life. No, Absolutely. You know? Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Yeah. yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Do what makes you happy and yeah. what makes you feel good. Yeah. And leave it at that. Yeah, let's leave it at that. And then uh, what, how can people find you, contact you? Yeah, absolutely. So you can reach out to me at www.physioworks, W-R-X is the works, dot com. And then on Instagram, it's just physioworks. So we put up exercises on there, kind of what updates, what we're doing. You'll see a lot of baseball guys on there, but we're going to start kind of putting stuff out for everybody. Um, those exercises work for everybody. It's not yeah. just baseball guys. And then if you have any questions or uh, want to get evaluated or just checked out or even go through the 3D motion capture system to see um, where you can improve your mobility or explosiveness, reach out to me. We'd love to talk to you and love to see you. What if I like, got uh, people who are not in the state? Yeah, still, you could reach out to me on my website. I have my phone number up there and email. Uh, we can always do um, FaceTime is an amazing thing. We could do FaceTime calls, make sure everything's moving well. I could take you through a whole assessment. Just hang your phone up on your wall and we could go through the movements or even just talk about goals and anything you want to get to. Huh, that is awesome. Uh, well, Thank you guys for watching, and then hopefully, like uh, you guys have more, like uh, more things you want to learn from, and then I would love to have you back on some yeah, point. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, yeah, let's just give us a comment. And then, if you guys are watching uh, YouTube, like uh, like this uh, episode, and then like that will help me to spread the word uh, out to different kind of people, more eyeballs, more ears. That will help me, and then that will help other people. Hopefully, uh, if you're listening to a podcast platform spotify or itunes give us five star reviews and then this will be the show today and then don't be a half stepper be always be frank see you guys next friday peace awesome dude thank you so much absolutely man. it was a blast <laughs>